I will be doing a series of videos explaining to you why we do certain tests when you come for your diabetes checkup. Let me start with a test which is done virtually at every visit when you come and this is what is called as the HbA1c test or the glycosylated hemoglobin, there is another way of saying it, glycated hemoglobin. Many of you are undoubtedly very familiar with this. This is called as the three months control test. Now what is the HbA1c test? This test was discovered only around 1979 or 1980. Until then, when a patient comes to us, we could do only a fasting blood sugar and an after food sugar, a postprandial blood sugar. I still remember I had a patient who came to me uh, from Erode. Now he had been very, very strict with his diet, taking medicines, and he had been following everything that we told him. But unfortunately, that morning, when he was coming in the train, he took a coffee with sugar. So when he came to our center, the sugars were high. The fasting sugar is also high, and the postprandial sugars were also high. At that time, we did not have the HbA1c test. So I was telling him, your sugars are not under control. And he was telling me, no sir, I am always keeping my sugars under control. Years later, when we had the HbA1c test, when such an incident occurred, we could immediately check whether what the patient was saying is right or not by looking at the HbA1c result. So let me give you an example. Let us say this person took, unfortunately, a cup of tea or coffee with sugar when coming for the checkup or on the night before he forgot to have his insulin or forgot to take his tablets. That morning when we do the sugar test, the fasting may be 160, postprandial may come as 250 or 300 and we will conclude that his sugars are not under control. But then now we have the backup test. We have the HbA1c test. Now the normal HbA1c is less than 5.6. What do we mean by HbA1c or glycated hemoglobin? Now hemoglobin you all know. This is the red color which comes to the blood is because of this molecule called as hemoglobin which is present within the red blood cells and that's why the red blood cells are red in color. Now as the blood is flowing and these red blood cells are also floating in the blood depending on how much of sugar is there in the plasma or the liquid portion of the blood a coating of the red blood cell specifically the hemoglobin occurs. Now this occurs slowly. An example I can give you for that is rusting. Suppose you kept an iron spoon or a knife out for some time. Depending on the amount of rust, you can say this has been kept out for at least one year, you can say, or six months, you can say. Similar to that, you will find that this coating of the hemoglobin with sugar goes on and on. But suppose the blood sugar level is normal. It's a non-diabetic person then the maximum coating that can occur can be 5% or 5.5% of the total hemoglobin. That's why we call it as HbA1c or glycated hemoglobin or sugar hemoglobin in other words. So for a non-diabetic person, the value will be below 5.6. Suppose you have pre-diabetes, then the value can be between 5.7 to 6.4. If you have diabetes, then the value is above 6.5. So it can be 6.5, 7, 8 and so on. This also tells you how badly controlled the sugar has been for the last three months. For example, we want every diabetic person's blood HbA1c to be below 7%. So suppose it is 7.5. We can say, no, it's not that well controlled. Try to get it below 7 or even below 6.5 or 6. But suppose somebody comes with a HbA1c of 9, 10, 11, 12, it means that the sugar has never been under control for the last two to three months. 
So let's go back to that story of the person from Erode who came to us. Suppose he had taken his cup of coffee with sugar only on that day and the blood sugar came as 160, 250 after food. But the HbA1c came as 6.3. I can tell him, yes, yes, what you're saying is right. Let's ignore today's blood sugar. We will go by the HbA1c test. Now, why is this HbA1c test so important? And how did these values of 7%, 6.5% and so on come? Many, many studies have been done to see when the risk of eye disease, kidney complication, heart complication, feet, nerve complications, all these, when does it come? And many, many studies have confirmed that as the HbA1c goes above 7%, your risk of developing complications increases. In fact, for every 1% increase in the HbA1c level, which means suppose it goes from 7 to 8, your risk has already increased by 25% to 30%. If it goes from 8 to 9, another 25%, 30%. So if it goes above, let's say 10 or 11, you're almost at 100% risk of developing diabetic eye disease or kidney disease, feet complications, heart complications, etc. And that is why we repeat the HbA1c test every three months to make sure that throughout the year, your sugar is kept under good control. Studies have conclusively shown that if you keep your HbA1c test below 7%, you will not get diabetic kidney disease, eye disease, nerve complications, and to a large extent, you can prevent heart and other complications as well. So now you understood why we do this HbA1c test. Now to do the HbA1c test, it can be done in many methods, and many of the labs don't do it so accurately. And that's the reason when you come to us, we say, why don't you do, this is the gold standard test and we do it by the gold standard method. So why don't you do it so that we'll have an accurate idea whether your sugar is under control. In the next series of videos, I'll be talking to you about other tests that we do at our center so that you will understand why each and every test is being done. Thank you.